Okay, so if you follow the posts I make on the Facebook monitor pages, you saw that I talked about how I was going to make a next video, or I should say the next video on the channel was going to be a Wells Gardner D9200 for the first time, but I had to order a bunch of parts, so I'm waiting on those to arrive. And in the meantime, I have a Mortal Kombat 2 PCB that is giving a CMOS error, and I want to see if I can get this up and running before uh, I work on that 9200, because that's probably going to be a long, a long rabbit hole. <laughs> so uh, let me show you what this is doing here. And you can see that it's giving me a CMOS error. And I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to get it working. I have to let this go through the boot sequence here. I don't want to, uh, well, if I try and skip past it, I'm gonna, uh, see, that's what I didn't want to do. Uh, so we'll have to run the boot test here. You saw it says CMOS chip U49 bad. Maybe I'll try and pause it to where I don't hold the start button too long. Oh, it says CMOS chip U49 bad. And what's interesting is that the there is no U49 on these boards. It's a leftover programming error from the Y unit. This is a what's known as a T unit. And the Y unit, the CMOS chip was actually U49. But on the T unit, it's uh, UJ11, if I recall correctly. Uh, but they didn't reprogram the fault to say UJ11. And even on the, the Wolf unit boards, MK3, UMK3, NBA Jam, uh, Hang Time, NBA Hang Time, things like that, they still refer to it as U, uh, U49, even though it's not. So, yeah, U49 bad. Unable to restore settings. So we'll turn it off. And let's get everything on the overhead and show down, and we'll see if we can actually get this working. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is start with a visual inspection. So we'll remove the memory expansion board. It lifts off with the two connectors here. And the revision ROMs are here, and the CMOS chip is actually this one. And if we look here, it says... UJ11. So the CMOS chip is actually UJ11, but due to the programming error, it actually says U49. So it's misleading if you ever come across this problem. Uh, but so we start first with a visual inspection. So they've already changed the battery. So we need to make sure that we're getting our three volts from the battery directly to the chip. But even if we weren't, it wouldn't say CMOS chip U49 bad. It would just say settings restored because it doesn't see the three volts. Uh, but we'll start with the visual inspection, and I see already some corrosion here. I don't know if we'll be able to zoom in far enough, but there's some green crusty here on this leg and this socket. And then over here, we got some more green crusty stuff under here. So there could be a problem with that, that lead there. But if I recall, I, th I think these leads on the bottom here all connect down to here. So we'll... We'll, uh, I think these go off into nowhere land up here through this way. We could have something wrong with any of these chips that interface with the UJ11, but in my experience, when you have this problem, it's either going to be a tra trace damage or a simply a faulty chip. Tr uh, corrosion, trace damage, or a faulty chip itself. So we'll start with uh, this here, and let's look at the back and make sure there's no trace damage or anything on here. Or bent pins touching? No, that all looks pretty good, actually. I don't see anything on the bottom of the board that might lead me to believe that there's damage to it. So if we simply remove this, how bad is this corrosion here? Well, we've got one... This leg of the chip... Uh, come on. This leg of the chip is missing. Is that even making connection? I wonder, because I think, let's get the meter here. Pretty sure that this goes to here. Yes. Okay, now when this is installed, is that actually making connection? Well, I guess. Let's clean these up. Let's clean this up with the fiberglass pen here. You can look at it beforehand there. And let's just...
sparkly clean. The other side, yeah, pretty decrepit here. I don't understand how these things get this way. And I suppose if this wasn't making a connection, the board really wouldn't even boot. Because if the revision ROMs are faulty, the board won't even boot. Now let's see if we can clean up some of this too here. And get some contact cleaner in here. And kind of just set this in and out a couple of times. Okay. And I wonder if that might have done anything. We can test to see if we're getting the connection on that pin by doing this. There's the pin. Here is this. Yeah, it's touching it. Well, let's just see if that did anything. I'm gonna just plug this in and turn it on. Bear with me for a moment. Okay, it's booting. And I'll skip past the check here. Nope, still got the air. Okay, well, so much for that. Turn this off. Okay, so yep, still got the same fault. So it's not a connection problem or that the green crusty stuff. So... Yeah, I don't think that's going to be a problem there. Okay, well, uh, you know, it's always a good idea to reseat the PLCC chips. If I can find where my puller went. Here we go. So, you know, let's look at UB13. Let's look at the controller here. That's fine. So I like to reseat these PLCC chips because now you'll notice I'm not using this in the method or manner that it's meant to be used because uh, it can slip off and just put a giant scratch and gouge across the chip. These little cheap $8, you're supposed to put it in there on each side and squeeze this and as you squeeze it, it pulls up on it. But one side is already broken, and when you do that, this can slip off and just put a big scrape and uh, gouge across your chip. So I just put one one foot in each side and just lift up, and they come right out. So it's always a good idea to reseat these PLCC chips and clean them up a bit because these get stagnant stagnant over the years and cause bad connections. So we'll just reseat that, and it goes in this way. All right, now let's get this one down here. So I just put one foot in and just gently lift up and they come right out without issue. So I don't like using the squeeze method on these cheap ones. They just, it's just not good. And uh, that looks, that did not look very good on that one. These were pretty, pretty dark. But not no mo. All right, and this one goes in this way. There's a little notch that indicates how it's oriented in here. You can see that. See how this one is bigger than the rest of them? Maybe you can't, but that's how it goes in. So, and it's interesting here. The factory from the the factory uh, solder wave didn't get this chip in all the way. It's still connected, but. Interesting. See that from time to time. All right, so now let me try it again here after reseeding those PLCC chips. And we'll see if that made any difference. You checking the RAM and... Nope. 
Still gets the CMOS chip E49 bad. Okay, well, that was definitely worth the effort. There's no reason not to try that. Well, I think we're at the point here. We need to verify we're getting our three volts to the chip from the battery. The battery reads... We'll go to ground here and we'll touch the positive of the battery. 3.0 volts, that's good. So now we need to check that we have three volts at the chip and I don't recall which pin it is, but we're gonna have three volts on one of them. And even if you didn't have three volts, it wouldn't give you CMOS chip U49 bad. It would just give you unable to restore factory settings because, uh, no, I'm sorry, not that. That's the U49. It would just say uh, CMOS settings, factory setting, settings restored because the thinks the battery is not installed. So it will just say factory settings restored. It won't say unable to restore. That's when you have a fault with the chip. So uh, just checking to make sure we're getting our three volts. Nothing so far, but I don't know which pin it's supposed to be. There it is, 3.02 volts, 3.02 volts. So our three volts is getting to our CMOS chip. So I think it's just time to replace it. I mean, that's about all I can do and hope that it uh, works. So I don't know if I want to use the hot air method or just use the desoldering station because I've got this socket here. Uh, I have another board here that I can use for testing and grabs in case we needed to, but you can see I've already removed this socket for uh, some other, this board was com completely dead and I just used it for a, a parts board. But uh, you can see I've already removed this chip for use on another board I've fixed in the past. And I think uh, I robbed the socket for something else or possibly removed it to prevent it from getting melted. But I think on this version, I used the hot, the hot air. So uh, we may try the hot air. I don't know how successful it's gonna be. We're definitely gonna have to remove this chip though. Get that out of there. And yeah, you know, there's no corrosion or anything on the underside, but it, yeah, it's just full of uh, fiberglass from my pen. So, well, I think we're at the point where we need to just replace the chip. Yeah. So before we do that, let's grab a, a donor board to rob the chip from and try out our method on that, removing that one first before we mess with this one. So let me grab a, a parts board that I can use to rub that chip from, and I'll come right back. Okay, so here's the parts board, and this one had controller issues. Looks like someone tried to reflow the uh, UE13 controller, and there's flux all over it. And th these are this is from a stack of boards I've got that I bought as uh, parts, a, a lot of parts boards. And you see they've already been picked clean and everything. So I'm gonna see if I can steal this uh, CMOS chip from this one using the hot air method and we'll just see how how that pans out here and what we'll do is I'll turn the iron on and while this is heating up I will throw a little flux on here you don't necessarily have to do this but I'll throw some flux on here just to kind of make it a bit easier now I have this this paste and it works just fine. Just kind of do that. I might not be able to put some down in here, but we'll try. I mean, I don't even really normally do this. It's not something you have to do, but I think for demonstration purposes, we'll at least try it. I could just probably put it on, put it on the bottom side, but that's okay. We'll see if that even helps out. I don't even know if it's gonna do anything, so. All right, well, where'd my little screwdriver go? I just put it away, here we go. I just used it and put it away. So let's see if we can, what kind of uh, result we get with this. I don't wanna burn my mat here, so we'll just put some tape down. The
the station here is set to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. You have to be careful with this when you, you don't want to pry the chip up. If you pry the chip up, you can actually break it because it's so hot you can damage the package. And we don't want to do that. You can also warp the board. You don't want to warp the board from the heat. So you just want to gently, gently lift up until it starts to move. And I don't know if this is being successful or not. Yeah, it's coming out. Now let's grab the other side here. I'm not left-handed, so... As expected, it's fighting me on the side with the uh, socket. I can't get it out of here. Nope. Well, that side, see I got one side out, but the side with the socket, yeah, just being difficult. Well, gonna have to break out the, uh, I couldn't get enough heat down in there, I guess. We'll have to break out the desoldering station, but no big deal, you know. First thing we have to do is change out this tip, because this is the bigger tip here. Let's make sure we don't have a clog. Nope, seems all right. Okay, now let's turn this on and we'll wait for it to heat up. You know, actually, I wonder if, I wonder if we could just use the braid. That annoying noise will go away here shortly. I just wonder if we could use the braid here. No, not really. Nah. Okay, well, it's gonna take a minute or so for this to heat up, so I'm gonna cut away and come right back. All right, we are sufficiently at 800 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're gonna use the iron here to facilitate our efforts. some solder to that one. That one's bent. Could be why I couldn't get it out.
I'm not worried about damaging this board, obviously, so I'm, a bit, I'm being a bit more rough with it than I should, but it's okay. Okay, so a couple of these, I gotta add a little solder to, because there's not enough to flow. go. Okay. Let's try it again now. No, that one is just stubborn. Yeah, we'll heat that one up separately. I really don't want to have to take out that revision ROM socket to do this. Got it. A little worse for wear, but we got it. Now, what we'll to clean all this up, bend these back a bit. There you go. No worse for wear. Now it's no worse for where it was, but now it's not. So what we'll do is we need to flatten these out. I don't have the tool, so we'll just use this way works just as well. Okay, then we'll have to come through here with the braid and get rid of all the excess solder that's on the legs because we're going to be going back in with a socket. Okay, this side. All right, I think that'll work. No excess solder on the pins. Everything seems flat. Okay, so all right now we have our chip out our replacement chip now we need to see if we can get our original chip out without destroying our revision rom socket this one uh, is a little charred but not too bad we may just try to do it from the top side and i'll probably remove this one as well Now you want to be careful when using like a screwdriver like this. You don't want to go in there and start jabbing because you'll tear up the traces. You want to go in the side here and just twist it, like like twist it. Then you can gently, gently pry up like that. So, all right. So now our other uh, chip is out, and okay. Well, let's uh, try again here. This time we'll concentrate on trying to get the side out first with the against the ROM socket. 
again this is the amateur channel so don't be expecting anything spectacular here like you know professional tools and things like that this is uh, just whatever it takes to get the job done I'll probably it might be a better idea to put this along the bottom side I'm gonna put this along the bottom side on this one that's way too much but we'll just spread it out here I need to really invest in some a nice Amtec flux uh, dispenser pin thing, but I'm just haven't gotten around to it yet, so I don't really do much of this type of repair. Quite honestly, it's just uh, every so often here and there. So, all right, well, let's see how this goes. Being stubborn, but we're getting there. Okay, now let's switch over to this side. Again, being stubborn. Keep the heat on there. Come on. There we go. Got it. Okay, so we'll put that aside, and I think our socket survived fairly well. Little scorched, but not that bad. Okay, now let's grab some 
denatured alcohol and clean this up. Side here. Yep, okay. Make sure we didn't open up any traces. Looks all right. It's quite easy when you're shoving tools under there to cause damage, but it doesn't look like anything is destroyed. Now we can run our braid across here and get rid of all of the leftovers. He says, and it's not proving easy because my soldering iron tip is not the best for this. There we go. Well, what I need to do is go through and add more, honestly. You know, you think, why aren't you using the desoldering station for this? Well, I guess I could, but uh, it, the, the tip doesn't have the highest surface and I can't put this on there along with that like I do normally. So I'll just use the braid here and it works pretty well. Once you just add more solder to the hole. There we go. One, two. Buckle my shoe. Three. Four. Okay, so you see the method here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away and come right back when I've got all these holes opened up. Then we'll get the socket installed and the replacement chip installed and see where we're at. So, yeah, let me get the rest of these opened up. You see the method there. I got four of them open already right there. So, let me get the rest of them opened up. I'll get it cleaned up and we'll get the socket installed and the chip and see what happens. Well, there we go. We got all of the holes opened up with the braid. Turned out just fine. Both sides nice and clean. Got them cleaned up as well. So no issues. There are a little bit of scratches here from using the tools, but there's no open traces. Didn't damage any of that. Checked it all out, so it's fine. So, all right. Now, the only issue is I don't have the proper socket. I have my stash of sockets here. All I have is a 40-pin socket for like a CPU. So we're going to have to come up with some type of way to make this work. Uh, I'll probably just lop off the extra end here. But we need to do... Well, first thing is make sure we get it installed properly. So there is a notch here that needs to match up with the notch on the soak screen, which is right there. So it needs to go in like this. And the chip has the soak screen on here. When you read it like this, you think, okay, pin 1 is over here. But no, it's actually upside down. The little notch here indicates pin 1. So we have to install this like this. And I want to go ahead and put this in here first to act as kind of a brace. So when we trim this, it'll not uh, move around on us. So that seems okay. 
That seems okay. All right, let's press this down in here like so. All right, so now our chip is seated properly in the correct orientation and it's going to act as a brace when we hack this, uh, we hacksaw Jim Dugan this off here. So if we simply go like so and like so, there we go. Trimmed up. So it's not ideal, but it'll work for what we need it to do. You know, and hypothetically, if this works, you should never have to really mess with this again unless the chip goes bad. But uh, yeah, I think that'll work. So now we're going to have the fun task of trying to get this in here. We're going to have to start with this side because of the it's being pressed out by the socket, the revision ROM socket. Well, that was easy. That went right in. But now we got to bend this so these all go in. And which ones hold me up here? Did we get it? We got it, just like a puzzle piece. Waha! Let's make sure all of our pins are out and, or through, I mean. Make sure, the last thing you want to do is solder 90% of these in and find one that's not through the hole. Yep, seems all right. And will it stay? Yes, it will. So here we go. And you want to leave the iron tip on here for a couple of seconds to make sure the solder flows through the via or the via, depending on what part of the world you're from. Okay, now let's flip it around and do the other side. Now ideally you'd be using a much smaller tip on your iron, but I'm too lazy to change it out. And it's just narrow enough where it doesn't cause a bridge between the, the pins here when we do this. And there we have it. Now let's clean it up again. I use a denatured alcohol. I don't use 99% alcohol. I use denatured alcohol because the denatured actually, it doesn't evaporate as quickly. And it actually, in my opinion, cleans a lot better. So it still evaporates just fine, but I like to use the denatured because it it doesn't evaporate as quickly as 99% and it cleans a bit better. Like, you know, I just said twice for some reason, but you get the idea. So there we have it. And if we turn it over, there you go. So we've got it oriented properly. Sockets installed right, chips installed right. Everything is okay. So let's put our UJ Let's put our revision ROMs back in. I gotta straighten the legs on this one a little bit. Okay. And UJ12. Okay, let's uh, plug it in, see if it works.
Okay, so we're back on the handheld here, and the reason I had to cut away there, I was testing live, as you saw. I would do some testing and then, or some troubleshooting, and then plug this in and test it, you know, above on off camera. But I didn't want to do that this time. I wanted to actually get this on camera in case our efforts have proven fruitful. We can share together if this works. So I had to get that involves, you know, taking the camera off of the the clamp here and the overhead because it clamps right here and points down and it's a whole process so i had to change to the handheld here on the iphone so i had to cut away so let's uh, turn this on for the first time i have not turned it on yet we've got our rom in, or our, i'm sorry our cmos chip in the socket as we saw all replaced so let's turn this on we're hoping to see the u49 error gone and we're likely going to see uh, factory settings restored because uh, the cmos chip was bad this is the first time we're powering it on so we're likely to see factory settings restored, but we're hoping to see the U49 error be gone. So let's find out. Did it work? Here we go. And I think this time to avoid skipping the text, or the text pops up very quickly if I try and skip this, I'm going to just let this run through and you'll see the ROMs will show up red because we don't have the memory expansion board plugged in. So, uh, all right, so we're hoping to see just factory settings restored and not see the U49 error if our repair is successful. I have to hit the button here to acknowledge the ROMs and yes! <laughs> now, if we reset this and skip past this, it should say CMOS OK. Yep, fan fantastic. And it resets because the, these aren't plugged in. Okay, now let's test our, let's test this by disconnecting this and verifying that this is actually faulty by removing it from the socket. And installing the original suspected bad one like eh, probably have to get this side in first and there we go all right and we are incorrectly with the dot on the notch and i don't see anything sticking out there looks good all right, so now let's test our old chip and see if the error comes back. And I'm going to let it go through here again. It doesn't take very long. What's gonna happen? There it is, U49 bad, unable to restore factory settings. You little rascal. Let's get this out of here again. Put our replacement back in. And we're probably gonna get the Factory settings restored again because we erased the CMOS information by putting, by replacing or removing the chip. But maybe it'll still say CMOS okay, I don't know. All right. Let's try again. I'm just going to skip past this this time. Yep. Uh, we'll reset. You can't, I can't, once you hit the start button, it just automatically skips that thing. So, um, but it did not say, it should say CMOS okay now. Yes. <laughs> okay. So confirmed, bad CMOS chip.
it happens. So, <laughs> sorry about the uh, non-professional job here. Again, I'm not a professional. But, anyway, so there you go. Bad CMOS chip. MK2 now working. You know what? We should probably go ahead and boot this up with the memory expansion board installed just to make sure there are no other issues. Which I've already pretty much done, but let's boot it back up with the board installed. Okay. Just make sure everything comes up green. Okay. It's all hooked up. <laughs> CMOS, okay. All right. I'm not going to be able to play with one hand here, but we'll try. Just trying. I got hold the. I got to hold the camera here with one hand. Yeah, there's no way. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay. Um, there we have it. Faulty CMOS chip successfully repaired. And if it goes bad in the future, now there's a socket. So. There you go. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.